Good evening, everybody, and uh, I bring this meeting to regular meeting to order for March the 15th, 2022. Tonight, uh, we have an additional flag that sits behind us, and that represents the uh, country of Ukraine, and we're lucky enough to uh, have this uh, flag loaned to us by the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, and we do thank them for loaning us this flag for this, uh, for this uh, meeting. Result of the regular agenda, sorry, result of the agenda for the March 15, 2022 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councillor White, second by Deputy Mayor Lintoni. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result of the minutes of the March 1st, 2022 regular council meeting and the March 1st, 2022 Handy Transit Van Committee meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. It's nice that we can all sit all together and all our viewers are able to see all their counselors. I can uh, confirm that uh, the majority of the time that they have all been here for the last two years. So uh, even though they've not been on the video, uh, they have been here participating the way that they should be. Six, 6.1, result of the letter dated February the 23rd, 2022, received from the Association of Manitoba Municipalities regarding the trading company canoe rebate 2020 and 21 be received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion, Councillor Bobbick. Does that rebate include fuel? Is there a rebate on fuel through the AM? Uh, canoe is not part of the fuel program through the AM. It's through the Alberta, I can't remember the name of it. AFRA or I can't remember exactly, but it's it's a different uh, program. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? So you can see here that uh, through all our purchasing through the AMM Trading Company, we received a little bit more than $6,900. So that's money coming back to the municipality. So it's a pretty positive uh, organization that uh, we have and the partnerships that we have with the AMM and what the AMM has. Uh, linked up as far as partnering with organizations and, and suppliers. Discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> 6.2, result of the February 2022 Swan River Handy Transit Van Report be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 6.3. Result of the letter from the Public Safety Canada dated February the 28th, 2022 regarding collective agreement with the National Police Federation be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Morio. <coughs> Discussion? Councillor Delorier. So we we were flying back. Uh, yeah, I guess first of all, expressing our, our dissatisfaction with the process and uh, looking for, you know, uh, I guess suggesting that they yeah. take on some of that burden is. And I guess my second question is, is this the letter that they were referring to when they said that they would be reaching out to each contract partner to discuss further? Because it, it doesn't sound like it's the options that they were kind of presenting, it sounds like basically you're going to pay it no matter what. But. Yeah, it, it doesn't sound like our options are going to be plentiful, but we did respond as soon as we got the letter that we want a meeting. Okay. And uh, we'll go, we can confirm that it, that this is the meeting that we're talking about. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, so we've already, just to confirm then, we've already sent a letter in response. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe we should reach out to whoever we were dealing with at AMM and just let them know, hey, we're starting to, they, like uh, as municipalities, hey, we're starting to get these letters. You know, we were, we were trying to negotiate en masse, like not have one-offs. So 
you know, uh, maybe we can take uh, some direction or take some cues from them as far as if if they, I know they were trying to get like one meeting so they could they couldn't pick us off, you know, one by one but sort of thing. Yeah. So maybe we should just touch base with with hey, whoever your contact is at AMM, let them know that hey, we got a we had a letter potentially going to be having a meeting. Yeah. What, what's our what's the position on this? Yeah, we can do that. We can contact other municipalities as well if we wanted to. Or, uh, <coughs> Yeah I, think, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, I was going to come back to you, Councilor Morio, anyways, but you have your ra your hand raised, so go ahead. Uh, yeah, so this is the, the letter that I was referring to um, that we were expecting from Public Service Canada. And to the meeting that Councilor Gloria is referring to, uh, the meeting that they offered in there is the one that AMM is trying to coordinate, um, where all 21 contract uh, municipalities. Um, take them all on together at one meeting um, so that they, like you say, don't pick us off one off at a time and show solidarity um, due to our displeasure um, for not involving us in that negotiation process and then sticking us with the bill in the end. So, but, uh, I believe there'd probably be one more final letter coming with our exact amount, but uh, as we work through those calculations a little bit more, but uh, this gives us the ballpark figure of where we're at. So, and I believe AMM sh should be uh, reaching out to uh, Mr. Poole um, to confirm some meeting detail and things like that. So if we haven't heard back probably by the week end, that we should uh, drop them a line just to confirm that that we have received these letters and we need to proceed. Yeah, well, we will contact AMM. Did, did you say by the weekend? Yeah, I would say by week's end, if we haven't heard from uh, uh, Mr. Kratz, um, that uh, we reach out to them just to confirm that we did receive the letter and the progress of that joint meeting. Okay, thank you. Anything further? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 6.4. Am I missing resolution there? Uh, I thought I seen a resolution there last night. I believe. We can go back to that while you. Uh, yeah, this should have gone under communications. <coughs> oh, just under communications. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so then, I guess we'll just. Uh, have that as an item for discussion, or I can I, guess. I can I can create a resolution <coughs> to receive it. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. I'll go to six point five. While you're doing that, uh, resolved that the building permits for two, uh, 22 through six twenty two with a total estimated value of five hundred and eighty thousand dollars be received. Moved by. Deputy Mayor Rantoni, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. I guess it probably pretty much could have made one up too, but 
resulted the letter from municipal relations regarding FAQ on bylaw enforcement be received. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? <coughs> this is the ongoing uh, changes to the uh, bylaw enforcement through the province or handled that have been lobbied or changes that we need to uh, comply, which I believe that we have been complying to these standards. I think it's just a reminder to the municipalities. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Moving down, seven point, uh, sorry, seven, seven point one. Result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor White, then Councillor Delorier. Um, just more of a compliment, a uh, significantly difficult term relative to moving snow around, and thanks to Councillor Bobbitt for showing me where to put that. I can't believe you found enough room to put all that snow, so uh, let's just thank you and your team for the work they're doing. It's appreciated. Yeah, I'll pass that on to the guys. Councilor Delorier. I see you're providing some lot information for the environment officer. Is that in regard to anything you can tell us about right now? Uh, he's doing some uh, <coughs> compiling of past uh, information, so there's like historical businesses and different types of hazard generators, hazardous waste generators, and contaminants. So oh, they're not looking at building something. I thought maybe it was like on a specific lot. No, oh, no okay. unfortunately not. Just uh, it has old business names okay. and whatever. So they're trying to reach out to municipalities to get it kind of updated. Okay. Uh, further discussion? <coughs> Let me add that uh, actually <coughs> So White's uh, comments about snow removal and the challenge that we had this winter and now we're seeing a opposite towards a, a spring melt as we hope and a, a short one. But I have seen Public Works out cleaning out the basins and, and getting ready for those uh, runoffs and so forth. But I do also thank uh, Public Works for uh, taking the time to listening to the residents also and uh, pointing out to certain areas that need to be uh, cleaned and uh, that were maybe a public uh, uh, hazard or uh, whatever it might be, but uh, I'm grateful that uh, Public Works listened to them and, and responded and, and taken care of the issues that were uh, <coughs> dealt from uh, large snow banks that we had. So thank you to the whole team. Yeah, yeah, and Jordan, he's been very proactive, uh, you know, making sure stay on top of the streets and going for the high volume ones first and then moving out to widen them out and you know making sure he had some guys doing the ditches before uh, we need it kind of thing just because there is so much snow in the ditches even if we have to go back to clean out a foot or two at least the majority is gone so right. he's done a really good job yeah thank you Councillor Baldick uh, just while we're mentioning snow removal, I'd like to actually thank Cook Brothers for doing an efficient job on Main Street. That it's done at night. Uh, there's no traffic hazard. And it's been a, a long, snowy winter, and they've done a great job of keeping Main Street open and had no uh, harm to anybody. Right. Again, okay. Thank you. Thank you. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. Uh, the report 7.3 council i'll begin with councillor or deputy mayor wintoni um i do apologize for last week not being available for the cow meeting um other than that i do not have anything to report to council today okay, thank you uh councillor friesen i was at the cow meeting and i was also at a community care meeting they are busy looking for a program coordinator uh, so if anybody uh, would like that position, uh, they should get a hold of me and I can direct them. Uh, I would like to compliment Daryl on the bison. I think it looks great out there. And I wish all to say prayers for the Ukraine. That's it. Please. Thank you. Councillor Bobber. I uh, also attended the council as a whole meeting. Uh, just I've spoke a bit on the phosphorus testing that's uh, going to be happening in the valley. Just got a little bit of an update here. So the phosphorus testing uh, 
which is going to be looked after by Lake Winnipeg Community Based Monitoring Network. So what's going to happen here is they've approached the watershed in this district to look after six separate sites to uh, test for phosphorus in the spring runoffs and later in the spring. Some of the sites that are going to be are Birch River near Birch River, Woody River near Bozeman, Swan River north of Minnetonas, Roaring River north of Minnetonas, Swan River near Swan River, and North Duck near Collin. So these will be tested probably twice a week and they will be done by volunteers hopefully. So we'll keep the council in a loop <coughs> of what the findings are. Also, when it comes to the watershed, I have uh, a little bit of a, a sheet here on uh, some of the ideas that were brought forward by our technician at Watershed about some of the things that can be done at the public reserve that we talked about. There was a snow dumping site now that no longer will be a snow dump, so I'll pass this forward. These are just basic ideas. It gives you different types of grass, uh, wildflowers and stuff that could be put there, but again, it's just ideas. A little bit of a pricing here. Uh, to do uh, survey the whole entire area, which they can do with their side by side pretty quickly with the technology they have. So uh, it's something I'll send forward to you, so you can look at it. But again, this isn't nothing wrote in stone. It's just a, something to guide with, and uh, we'll keep you informed if uh, that's something that we wish to go ahead with. Um, just also was at the G4 meeting. Uh, spoke about rise, when, and where, and the number of people. So I guess. The question is that do we have by May 4th, we should have some candidates for being on that, or is that the direction? So I guess the council needs to, everybody try to figure somebody out so they can put there. I don't know, uh, uh, the number two came to mind, but at the same time when I spoke on it, I said it could be four from one district. It doesn't, yeah. so uh, the more we get the merrier, I guess. Uh, we also spoke a little bit about a youth council member. Is that would that be moving forward, or has anybody been approached? Or? I I I don't know. Maybe you weren't here last week. I think we talked about that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And I have reached out to the regional school, the principal, and said that we're because we're basically out of the most of the the mandates that we have to follow, and we can proceed. Uh, that uh, I would like to have a student representative at this council in the in the last bit of this term. So it's kind of like been left to the school to see if they can find somebody, but we have reached out to them, yes. Okay, great, thank you. Also, just speaking of Ukraine there, we've talked of Ukraine. Is there some way that the town of Swan River can move forward and see what we could do to help? I know there may be nothing we can do, but I think we need to move forward with something, uh, get in touch with the council and, and see what we can do. There is facilities in this valley that could be used. Uh, when we talk of economic development, I think this would be a prime thing, bringing people to the valley to settle here and help them out of the endangered areas that they're in. So I don't know how or what council would like to, how to move forward with this. I think that I can answer. We, if everybody has signed up for uh, emails from the AMM, <coughs> through the AMM, there's emails, and you might have received an email that the government has set up a department or, or a, a, I guess, a department, so to speak, that will deal with any of the, uh, if it's immigration through, uh, from the Ukraine and questions and so forth, I guess what we could do is maybe reach out to that uh, organization, well, that government department and, and suggest that there might be something available. I know that we talked about that with one person that gave us yeah. a tour last week and, and perhaps maybe we can reach out to uh, that department. Yeah, and there's been, I've spoken with lots of people that are willing and able, and I don't know what part of it they can help, but I mean, at the same time, I guess if we get in touch with this agency, is there some way we can make what we have and what we have to offer so they would know? Yeah, we can, we I, can do that, Councillor White. Uh, wonderful suggestion, I appreciate it a lot. Uh, immigrant services just jumps out at me. That, that's, that's your descriptor, help people from other countries, and I believe it's fair to say they have one Ukrainian family coming already, okay. and whether they would take more, uh, that's uh, up to that team, but they're a logical one uh, to, to meet with, because they have the mechanism, they know what needs to be done, licenses, insurance, where to get a telephone, there's things that we all take for granted, but I'll talk about that later, but that's a logical. 
Yeah, thanks for adding that. But definitely, yeah, I think Councillor uh, Friesen is bringing that up. But if you have individuals that might be asking those questions, then we can probably direct them to that agency. Okay, that's what I'm kind of getting <coughs> But I mean, at the same time, I'm thinking, is there some way that the town of Swan River can go to that agency and say, this is what we have to offer? Uh, I can't see why it would hurt. You know, okay. like, uh, of course yeah. we can. You no, know, and we, then, and we, then we want to reach out to you know all you know if it's immigration services or or anything that we can help with any individual or or however we can help. So on uh, is it May third? We have a G four meeting again. May second. Uh, May second. Sorry. Second. Yeah. yeah. Would that be something that we would bring forward? That's a great idea of the Ukrainian yeah. issues. As a whole, as a valley as a whole. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I just. Thanks for bringing thing, it up. Yeah. Just one other thing. I'd like to congratulate the guys on the snowmobile. Until you've hauled snow and how boring it is to go back and forth every day for months on end, it's pretty boring. So kudos to them for getting the job done. I've watched them on the, clean the shoulders on uh, the east end of Main Street here now, which is very good because there was lots of blind spots in it. Uh, they do it very safely and efficiently. So kudos to them. So. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor White. Uh, firstly, thank you. appreciate your, your comments, sir. Uh, I've had the opportunity to attend about five hockey games with all these relatives and cousins. But as that evolved, I, I began to realize what a wonderful job the people are doing are looking after our arena. I'm a fussy guy about cleanliness and tidiness and uh, going into the washrooms, going into the canteen area and what a wonderful economic development program that building is for our community. Like there's what, six teams from Dauphin, Gilbert, Brick, Plains, Grandview, Thompson, all of them. They spend money in our town so that arena is uh, doing a, a great job for us. Uh, and, uh, March the, the 5th I went to uh, Swan Valley Immigrant Service <coughs> I didn't go, that's not true, but they held a uh, a sledding thing, it was co-sponsored by Flamin, and they had roughly 50 people there from all over the world, and uh, what a compliment their local business community to, to partner with Immigrant Services. The G4 in Birch River, as you guys alluded to, we went, and uh, Riser certainly talked about it. When I came back also, they talked about funding for the CT scan, and I think it's fair to say it was unanimous that the uh, stipend, whatever term you like, the tax base we put in right now was supported by all the G4 members present, that they continue to put the money into that uh, CT scan. That, uh, that made me feel a lot better because I wasn't sure that it was going to go that way when we arrived, arrived but they saw what was happening. Uh, March 8th, uh, uh, Mayor uh, Jacobson, myself, and Mayor and Mr. Burnside, and uh, Councillor Delorier met with Dr. Burnside, and we talked about medical services and some plans and ideas how to recruit medical doctors. We're massaging the existing plans. And one thing that we're so aware of is the doctors are too, we're shorter nurses, big time shorter nurses. So our plans with the, with the nurse programming, uh, there's plans moving forward. So hopefully that will, will come out of that. So Dr. Burnside was a big help. On uh, March the 9th, I think that was very recently, uh, I attended my first ever uh, immigrant services. And I think, uh, well, to your question, I believe they have a Ukrainian family coming already. And you talk about the League of Nations, and you talk about economic development. We have people coming from all over the world to our little community, sharing their cultures with us, and hopefully us sharing their cultures with them. And I, I, I was so pleased with the attitude of compassion and caring by all those people there. Uh, lots of activities planned for the future. A couple of dinners we're going to have. Everybody's going to be invited. Barbecues, they'll be invited. So is it $2,000 a year we give them, or 1000 it isn't a ton of money, and, and it brings a lot of money to our community. So I'm going to do some soul searching relative to that amount as it evolves. So thank you. Thanks, Councillor White. Uh, Councillor uh, Delorier. Uh, just to further report on the the G4 meeting, you know, I think I think it was about two or three G4s ago where I was I was pretty <coughs> frustrated. They they were very superficial. We never talked about anything substantial ever. Um, it didn't seem like anyways, but the last two have been actually re really good as far as uh, getting to the meat and potatoes of issues that are that are involving us uh, and our and our neighbors. Um, and specifically about the rise issue, uh, 
And just to fill in those that weren't weren't he, weren't at the meeting, uh, we talked about rise for at length. Uh, there was a, a, an excellent speech given by by a gentleman from Swan Valley West. It you know it was it was a really good speech. It probably changed maybe uh, some perceptions that people may have had for some people that were in that room. I, I you could almost feel it in the room. Um, it out out of that meeting, uh, it was agreed that we would form a kind of an ad hoc committee to uh, to get some terms of reference together and on the May 2nd we're going to have kind of an emergency G4 meeting on May 2nd uh, where we'll be where we're going to nominate a, uh, people from the community to sit on a board that can basically give us as a, as a municipality some direction uh, so that that'll be on our next cow meeting we'll be discussing what we as a municipality want to see on those terms of reference and and who uh who are the list of potential candidates that may, we, we may want to appoint to there we'll be, each municipality will be appointed to and we'll be going over them as a whole uh at the next second meeting so anyways that's that's where that's at uh other than that nothing else that hasn't been reported on okay thank you <coughs> uh, council morial <coughs> Um, I attended three meetings that uh, have already been uh, reported on. The uh, Committee of the Whole, the Medical Professional Recruitment Committee, and the G4 meeting. So I won't uh, belabor it anymore um, for everything that was said at the meeting was said already. Okay, That's thank all. you. Thanks. <clears throat> I guess for myself, um, uh, I want to just go back to the G4 and, and, and definitely the comments from one of the uh, councillors about uh, rise and the continuation of some type of economic development and and in that room he never heard anybody disagree that we need economic development and so we have money in our uh, in in rise right now and the comments were that don't uh, dole out this money back to the municipalities because we have taxed people on that money for that levy towards rise and economic development. And it's not money that should go back to, to fulfill something else. We, we made a commitment to uh, economic development when we actually stated those levies. And so the goal is to not to tax anything for this year, but using some of the funds <laughs> out of rise for economic development and with this, uh, with this uh, group, I, can say, I guess you can say, that will give a recommendation on econo economic development moving forward. I just wanted to make sure that I mentioned that. The other thing that came out of the G4 meeting that Councillor White just kind of mentioned uh, earlier, and that is on the, the levy for doctor recruitment, and, and yes, we, uh, uh, we're continuing on with what the levy is. There was no, uh, uh, nobody that stood up and said that we shouldn't, so it was unanimous, uh, the people that were sitting in the room. But it was mentioned that when we go to the AMM, that we should be uh, lobbying for support uh, to the province for doctor recruitment and, and nurse recruitment. So I think that uh, we can't forget that. I don't know if we'll, that'll be an opportunity that we can do this this year, but definitely in the fall when we go to the uh, to the AMM and uh, bring those items forward, that that's something that we don't forget. Although I'm not saying that the spring one you can't or you, you shouldn't. So go ahead. On that, is it too late to have resolutions for the June district meetings? Uh, no, they actually, we just got that, I just got that email for that request. So okay, well, I'll, I'll bring a resolution for next council meeting so that, that this council can approve it and then it can go to the June district okay. meeting. Well, thanks for bringing that up because I actually thought that that time had already passed. So, um, yeah, that's a great idea. Council Morio, you had a question for me? Uh, I was just going to say the exact same thing that Mr. Poole said, that we just got a reminder from AMM to get the resolutions in by June 1st. Okay. Yeah. So that's something that uh, we can take away and, and, uh, and lobby uh, for uh, through the AMM. Uh, of course, we had the meeting with the medical professions, and, and uh, I thank Councillor White for setting that meeting up with Dr. Burnside, and uh, we did have a, a lot of you know, fruitful discussion. Uh, a lot of it definitely is on the, um, the the recruiting side of doctors right now because we are losing a few doctors in, in the community and, and their uh, search of, of replacements. So that's an ongoing thing and and uh, definitely uh, shows that we need uh, our uh, doctor recruitment 
uh, and nurse recruitment fund to, to help with those incentives. And also with that, uh, the continuation of uh, lobbying for that CT scanner and, and uh, uh, Dr. Burnside is a, a huge advocate for us and, and with the clinic and uh, hopefully in some short time that we'll see some fruit as far as the, uh, the CT scanner coming our way. Uh, Thursday night uh, we have our town hall on crime. Uh, everybody will be present. I know that Council Morio will attend by Zoom and uh, I definitely uh, hope that we will be um, uh, frank and we'll have an open discussion and you know we obviously will have people that will be upset and, and, and angry and, and there will be <laughs> people that will want to just voice their opinions and, and maybe add some conversation but I think it's an exercise that this community needs to go through and, uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to it and, uh, and, and move on to the, to the next stage wherever that might be. Uh, not officially from me, but I can say that um, I did hear a little bit of rumblings that they are going to proceed with the rodeo uh, this, this uh, summer, but they will officially make that statement from the Ag Society, but I have heard that they are working hard to, uh, to get that going as long as nothing, uh, you know, obviously happens between now and, and then that will hinder from that to happen, but we're definitely looking forward to a lot of uh, events that uh, we certainly miss in the last uh, two years or more. Uh, again, uh, the, the uh, Swan River actually uh, uh, hosted the Manitoba Under 15B <coughs> Provincial Championships and, uh, and what a great weekend that was. We had several teams from around the province that participated. It was, uh, it was great to watch and some great uh, youth hockey and, uh, and Good for us and our, our Stampeders, they came out on top and, and, and won the, the, uh, the championship, so congratulations to them. Stampeders, our Swan Valley Stampeders, they're moving on to the first round, so we definitely wish them well and, and definitely get out there and, and cheer them on uh, in this uh, first round. And I think that's it, other than, um, you know, the, over the last month, I think there has been some discussion about or, or challenges on uh, COPP, and uh, we heard that from Councillor uh, Bobic. And tonight I want to say that uh, I fully support uh, COPP, and I think it's a, it's a very valuable uh, organization, organization to our town. Uh, I know that prior to COVID-19, uh, uh, Councillor Morio had spent some time trying to bring this together, and it finally had, through other efforts, through uh, the consortium group and definitely um, we're, we're, uh, we're uh, very happy to have that come together and, and uh, definitely hope that we would be more uh, volunteers that will join that. With saying that, <clears throat> I will uh, um, uh, match Councillor Bovic's uh, uh, challenge and my wife has also given her $100 to match that challenge and my kids have also given uh, some money from another retailer in town to match that as well so uh, I do uh, thank uh, COPP and uh, and hopefully that can come to use. Thank you very much on behalf of uh, as a chair of uh, COPP thank you very much for your donation your worship along with your wife and your family thank you very much that uh, um, will be most appreciated and uh, go towards fuel and refreshments for um, the group that is uh, patrolling our community. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thank you. So with that, uh, that's it for me, I believe. So uh, I'll turn it over to Councillor Bobby. I just uh, could have a, a question for you. I guess on the meeting on Thursday night, is there going to be questions directed towards the RCMP on behalf of the Thomas Wander River Lake? Yes. Yeah. There is. Okay. Yeah. It'll it'll be an opportunity for the, the the people that are attending the audience to have a question. But if you have a question that maybe somebody has asked you, you have yourself, okay. then you have every opportunity as an individual as well to ask uh, if if it's the justice or or uh, from uh, the RCMP or whomever, you have uh, the right to ask that question as well. 
Well, I guess what I'm getting at is, is a, and we've had a very good relationship with the RCMP, and we've asked <coughs> questions, but I would like to see the public know that these are the questions. Oh, absolutely. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Councilor White. I see we're on the topic. Uh, I appreciate everything's done, and it's working wonderful. And I always like to polish things a little more if possible. And at the moment right now, as I understand it, the accepted protocol for this meeting is everybody's allowed one question, and of course you've got to be civil and polite, blah, blah, and that's it. But in, in so many forums that I've attended, you ask the question, the guy gives you an answer, and sometimes that evokes another question related to the answer. So I feel that most people, most entities would say you're allowed one supplemental question. When that's over, if you can get you back at the end, when it's all over, we'll bring you back. But someone just giving one answer. Often I get answers. I don't know what that means. I say, could you expand, please? So I think it, in my mind, it's more appropriate to give them one supplemental question. Okay. Well, we can consider that, and and I guess we have to monitor that according to how many people do want to speak as well. So we'd have to watch that, but definitely we'll consider that. So thank you. All right. So any other thing brought to my attention at all? So if not, uh, Mr. Poole. I do have, you, a, you do have your report there, a written ahead. report if there's any questions on that or anything inside that report. Uh, fire away. Just to let council know we've uh, booked the venue and working on catering for the G4 meeting. Uh, we've sent out early agenda notices to try and uh, add a few agenda items from other municipalities. Our strategic plan will be rolled out uh, next week so that will go in mailboxes and uh, your worship, I'm sure, will be up for another interview if we request that, just to discuss uh, our strategic plan and where we see the town going. <coughs> uh, and to echo what his worship <coughs> stated, if if you're interested and, and want to become informed, show up Thursday at seven o'clock at the vet hall for our our town hall meeting on crime. Our local media outlets. Uh, have been talking about it as well as CKDM and CBC, so we're making a little bit of splash in the media world, but uh, if you want to become informed, please attend. Uh, and the budget, just finalizing the budget for the 22nd uh, and creating the cheat sheet as requested for council. Okay. Uh, yeah, just on the, the, uh, the crime uh, meeting that we're having, I was interviewed by the CBC this afternoon. Uh, and on another note, I guess the councillor Friesen brought up, but uh, the uh, the bison sculpture that we have on the south of uh, town, uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, make sure you go and, and check it out. Uh, we're pretty lucky to have an individual like Darren May that lives in our community that uh, is so talented uh, to, uh, to do this for us. And, and I was so uh, great to uh, have a chance to chat with him. and. And, uh, and and make this work and and you know I have to say also thank you for Public Works to help him get the the snow put into that mold and and uh, setting it up for him to do the sculpture. But the sculpture is very fitting for uh, our bison and our you know symbol of our province of Manitoba. And uh, get out there and take a selfie or take a picture with your family before the the uh, the fella disappears and melts away on us. So go yeah. ahead. And, and I guess as CEO, I wanted to, to thank our directors for what council is seeing as a, you know, a job well done. I see a lot of compliments to the managers. That's, that's a good sign. And I myself would like to thank uh, CFO Ganita for getting our, our uh, financial statements done on time and on deadline for today. Great. So, thank you. Councilor Friesen. Daryl also has the eagle. Yes. Everybody has seen that. If you go to the bison, there's steps that go right up to the bison. Mm -hmm. You can actually go right up and do your selfie. Yeah. I thought that was a great idea. Then. Good. Thank you. All right. So eight new business. Eight point one. Whereas the, well, I'm sorry, I'm getting these things popping up on my screen here. Whereas the country of Ukraine has been invaded by Russian military forces and whereas the federal government of Canada has agreed to match any donations given to the Canadian Red Cross to provide relief to Ukraine, therefore it be resolved that the town of Swan River donate $2,000 to the Canadian Red Cross to be used to provide aid to the Ukraine. Moved by Councillor White, 
Seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? Councilor White? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I, I wore with great pride my Ukrainian culture colors today. I'm told they're blue and yellow. I'm, I'm not sure because they're colorblind. I have great pride to see the Ukrainian flag hanging in our uh, office. I have great pride with the Star and Times showing the creativeness and putting the Ukrainian colors on the front page of the paper. A Ukrainian friend, as I say, that with, with pride has given me a, a sticker to put on my, my car or wherever. And I think a two, two million people displaced from their homes. Two million. And how many people are dying? Because what I perceive to be a, a pretty aggressive madman, Mr. Putin, no Putin, I'm not going to call him Mr. And I think, our, I think our, our community as a whole would take great pride in displacing $2,000, of course, is a lot of money to some, but I would hope our community would see that as a small token of appreciation and help to the people of Ukraine. So uh, that's why that's there. Council Bobby. Uh, reiterate what Council White has just said. Uh, my question is, usually the town responder has a, uh, in their budget for donations and stuff, and where are we at with the budget? With that? Uh, I guess this particular donation is, is not in the budget. Uh, but there used was a budget line for donation. Yeah. See if we need it, would you know off the top of your head if there's a donation line and what it is? I would have to look it up here. I think we got rid of that about eight years ago. Okay, yeah, well, that answers that yeah. question. Yeah. Right yeah. 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 I, and don't get me wrong, I'm just uh, asking the question. Anything further? No, that's it. Thank Council Morio. Um, I appreciate uh, the motion that's on the floor. Um, I appreciate and I res understand and respect the difficulties that are, are going on in Ukraine and the challenges that they um, are enduring. Um, I have many great Ukrainian friends that are from there um, and have relatives that are there. Um, and I fully support individuals if they so choose with their own funds to make use of that program to donate there. However, I do not feel that using tax public dollars that is not in the budget to a cause um, would be inappropriate. That's not what we taxed our people for. Um, there is no donation line for that. Um, so to redirect funds, with uh, I just don't feel that's right. Um, if people want to donate on their own with their own funds, on their own accord, that's 100%. But I personally don't feel that governments should be using tax dollars to donate uh, to other areas that are under difficulties. Um, so that, that, to me, opens up the Pandora's box of where do you stop. There's other hard uh, war-torn countries that are going under civil distress right now. Um, where does it end? So, I appreciate the motion. I fully support donating there, but I just don't support it using tax dollars for that cause. If people, if we encourage people that if they can donate with their own funds on their own accord, but not with tax dollars. Okay, thank you. Councillor Delorier. No, I didn't know that. Okay. For the discussion, Councillor uh, White. I believe that we are elected to, to make decisions for our people who elected us. And this is not a one-off. This is not something that happens every year that we donate monies out of the blue. This is something that hasn't happened forever, where a democratic country is invaded by uh, Putin's like people. This is, yeah, I agree we shouldn't give it to the basketball program in the Oscar Thousand. This is unique. This has never happened before. And we spend money, let's pretend that we have an event over there, we spend 20,000 bucks on it, it's good for the community, we vote for it. This is good for the community, this is good for our soul, this is good for our hearts to help other people. We spend monies, on, let's say we, we put a kazoobo in the park every year, we spend 5,000 bucks on kazoobos. Do we need the kazoobos? These people need it. A lot more than things we spend our money on. Okay. So 
Councillor. Further discussion? Councillor, or, sorry, Deputy Mayor Wintoni. I move to table this resolution to our next Cal meeting for further discussion. Okay. Second to table. Councillor Bobbitt, all in favor? Just you want to table. It's tabled. Moving on, 8.2. Resolved that this letter from sorry. Resolved that the letter from the Swan Valley Crisis <coughs> Center, dated March the first, two thousand and twenty-two, together with the enclosed, enclosed annual statistic report two thousand and twenty twenty-one, and the audited financial statements for the year ended March thirty-first, two thousand and twenty-one, be received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion. All in favor? It's carried. 8.3 resulted in the $1,000 annual grant to the Swan Valley Crisis Center <coughs> approved for payment for 2022. <coughs> Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.1. 10 Resolve that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 28661 to number 28719 totaling $201,300.69 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5047 to number 5053 totaling $94,553.17 as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposits totaling $25,187.10 as listed on Schedule C. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.2. Result of the financial statements for the 12 months ending December 31st, 2021, be adopted as received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Antoni, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Just want to say thank you very much to uh, CFO Ganita for uh, doing an excellent job on completing our financials as always and to all the administration that uh, helps and assists him in getting those accomplishes, accomplishments be achieved. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 10.3, result of the Valley in the Mountains Tourism 2021 yearly membership in the amount of $1,500 be approved for payment. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, Seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor Delorier and then Councillor Morio. Do, do we still have somebody that sits on this board? I sit Are on that board. Sit, has, it, has it been meeting? There hasn't been any uh, formal meeting since COVID. There's been communications, but no uh, formal meeting. So are they still producing the tourism guide going mm -hmm. forward? This is going forward. Uh, that'll be the decision to make. This was the the membership, the second half of the membership from the 2020 um, yearly member, or the yearly... Um, 2021. But it was broken into two payments. So <coughs> instead of uh, charging the municipalities, um, only one, it's divided twice. So one for one year, one for the second year. So oh, this okay. was the 20... 2020, 2021 years, okay. two years. Uh, uh, go ahead, Council Morio. <clears throat> no, uh, Council Doria had asked my question. Okay, Mr. Paul. I just wanted to ask, did, did Manitoba Tourism get a hold of you? I have not heard from Manitoba okay. Tourism yet. I know that uh, I did get the email that they were reaching out, but I haven't heard anything. Yeah, just yet. Okay, so uh, further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 
11, 11.1. <clears throat> Is all the bylaw 1 2022 being a bylaw to amend the organizational bylaw be read at first time? Moved by Councilor Memorial, second by Councilor White. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Eleven point two, resolve the bylaw three two thousand and twenty two being a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw nine two thousand and four <coughs> as amended to resolve <coughs> one two and three plan fifty nine two six seven from R S six residential family zone to R T residential two family zone to be read a second time. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11.3. Resolved the bylaw 7 2022 being a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw 9 2004 as amended to rezone lots 21 to 37 block 3 plan 2554 from ML light industrial to MH heavy, and sorry, industrial heavy be read a second time. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.4. Result of bylaw 8, 2022 being a bylaw to establish a tax stabilization reserve fund. Be read a second time. Moved by Councillor uh, Friesen, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Bobic. Could this be explained in the short term? Do we want uh, CFO Gadita to explain that? Yeah, please. Okay, CFO Gadita. Uh, yes, uh, Council was looking for a mechanism to uh, use the surplus from 2021 in some way in the future to avoid huge, large tax increases should certain circumstances happen. And so this reserve fund is the means, a means by which that goal can be accomplished where the surplus can be put in the tax stabilization reserve and then used in future when needed to uh, avoid a large tax increase in a given year. Okay, thank you. Yep, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.5. Result of bylaw 9, 2022, being a bylaw to establish rules and procedures for the use of municipal resources during the 42-day period before a general election be read a first time. Moved by... Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Councillor Delorier. So, the way I read, uh, uh, boy, they're not, even, they're not numbered, but uh, restrictions on candidates' use of municipal resources. Uh, so, the, the, the two ways that you can use municipal resources, if it's normally made available to the public, uh, and the public doesn't need to seek permission or authorization for its use, and that it doesn't inter, uh, unreasonably interfere with uh, other members of the public using it. So, and that's all fine. I, I fully support the intent of this, but I, I just want to make sure that I'm understanding it correctly. So if I, as a candidate, wanted to rent the Veterans Hall, I wouldn't be allowed to do that, you know, to have a campaign event there. Because, because it, wouldn't, it wouldn't fulfill the, the requirement that uh, it's, a, it's a resource that's normally made available to the general public without the general public need to seek permission or authorization. The general public needs to seek permission or authorization to use that building, so right away it's struck off our ability to do that. And I guess I, guess I, I, don't, I don't think it'd be fair to limit, if a candidate wanted to rent the Veterans Hall, I think they should be able to, the, the general public can. So I, I just want to make sure we're not being unduly harsh here. No, I don't, I don't think the intent of the bylaw is to stop a candidate from renting <coughs> a hall using their own money. 
This is strictly about municipal resources. And I don't think that, like again, I don't think the intent is, is calling, like if you rent the hall, uh, I guess calling that asset a municipal resource is one way of, of including the hall as that, but I don't think it's intended to use the hall as a resource. And I would, I would agree that you probably we don't intend to do that, but the way this reads, if you wanted, if you know, if you wanted to stick to the letter of the law, because you know, in the definitions, it defines a municipal resource as anything owned or controlled by the municipality, uh, not limited uh, to property, facility, infrastructure, and equipment. Well, that's a facility. I guess. So I guess we would have to argue the the definition of resource. Is it an asset or a resource? Well, it, I guess in the facilities. in the def, the definition defines resource, so there's no sense even arguing about it. Property, facilities, infrastructure, and equipment. <clears throat> So I, I guess where I'm going with this, I think this this is a great thing. We need something like this, yeah. but I think we should maybe look at it a bit further to make sure we're not unduly restricting candidates from things that are kind of no brainer, so to speak. Yeah. I don't think anybody wants to make it so that you can't rent the veterans hall to have a campaign event. And, and this is the first reading, so that opens that up, so we can get some clarity, or if there needs to be some word changes, that could be added to the second reading as well. Uh, Mr. Harvey. Yeah, he kind of answered it there. What I was thinking. So okay. Councillor Delory did. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, for the discussion. I, I guess can we bring this to a cow meeting then, so we can for, before yeah. second reading, so we can you know I guess go over what this actually means. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> the good part of a, a bylaw, a new bylaw, or, or changes to a bylaw that you have the chance to make changes uh, before the, say, the second reading or the third. So, 11.6 resolve the bylaw 13 2022 being a bylaw, or sorry, being amendment to the bylaw enforcement. Establishing a penalty for the violation of bylaw 9 2022 they read a first time moved by Councilor Morio seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni discussion All in favor It's carried 11.7 Result of bylaw 11 2022 being a bylaw to establish a recreation equipment replacement reserve fund, they read a first time. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor Bobbick? Why would we need recreation equipment? Don't we have an equipment replacement reserve now? Mr. Harvey? We have one for public works. And then uh, in the past, public or uh, recreation, I believe they bought theirs with borrowing. So they want to set up a similar equipment reserve that they can use to plan out their equipment so that the reserve fund covers when the Zamboni comes up and when their mowers come up. And then it's a fund that's managed by their director so he knows how much, how much funds to put into it to make sure that he can meet those milestones when things are up for replacement. Okay, so at this point in time there is no money put into the reserve fund for equipment right now that goes towards recreation. That's correct. It's used for public works equipment. So will this create a negative on the budget side by adding more to it or what what this is doing is just creating the reserve the manager would have to show council in a report how this is going to work over say the next five years, what the what the annual what he wants to put in annually and, and prove to council how that will save them in the future. Uh, so this is not a, a resolution putting any money into the budget, it's just creating the reserve. Mr. Fedorchuk, I was going to call you up, but you uh, already have your hand, so go ahead. Just to get on the same kind of level as Public Works with their 
asset management planning, all that sort of thing. We want to have a plan in place so we're not coming to council for borrowing every time, you know, we need a Zamboni or we need a tractor, for instance, or anything like that. So just trying to get more planning kind of in place here. Okay, thank you. Councillor Mor uh, Mario. Um, do, do we not have the first half um, for the tractor replacement from last year in a reserve? Like, I don't know which reserve would be for that tractor replacement that we're budgeting for the second half this year. Is that somewhere? Mr. Paul? It is. We do have a general recreation reserve, and, and we, we created that reserve for anything and everything in recreation. Uh, this reserve is specifically for equipment to, to create that, that rotating plan uh, similar to Public Works, strictly for equipment. Uh, that money, you know, in the past we've operated uh, out of that recreation reserve and it could be spent, it was wide open. Literally anything in rec uh, could be spent at a All water crisis. Okay. okay, sounds good. Councilor Bonnick. So would I be under the understanding that there would be no additional monies just that you're going to name the reserve different? You're going to split that reserve? But are you saying that you did put money in there for equipment and then took it out of that reserve prior to this one being? Well, I would say we put money in into that reserve for anything in recreation, be it a hot water tank, uh, softener at the pool, which was $10,000, you name it, or uh, at the time it was created, or a tractor, yes. So okay. it, was, it was equipment, it was mechanic, it was HVAC, it was, it was everything. Concrete, uh, this one is strictly for equipment, so we will no longer use that other reserve for tractor replacements or Zambonis or anything else. Uh, both reserves, the, the manager uh, should show council exactly what they're going to be for, but this is uh, how we should be operating. Uh, it was it was either one of two ways that they they combine the equipment reserve and run out of one, and we're going to be asking for an annual increase, uh, or two separate reserves. So I guess that's what I'm getting at. So is this with this new reserve being created, there's going to be a new budget line this year. Uh, that's up to the manager if you can convince council to <laughs> put that in on the 22nd. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. So what I mean, at the same time, council in the past has looked at this and put into that other, the existing reserve, which now maybe not as much would go into that, but the rest would go into machinery. Yeah, I'm just waiting for Councilor Bob to finish. Yeah, the, okay, yeah. so uh, I believe the director for Norchick probably will answer your question. Yeah, so the, the other reserve is a major repair reserve is what it's what it's deemed as. Um, we would typically, going forward, like I said, we want a more concrete plan because there's a lot of infrastructure, especially in that aquatic center. So our major repair reserve would cover, you know, pump failure, that sort of thing, where this equipment reserve, like the CAO pool was saying, is for tractors, uh, edgers, zambonis, that sort of thing. We want to split it off just so we can better manage our asset management plan. And for this year, we won't be asking for any any funds in the reserve uh, just because we have the tractor on the table right now that we you know desperately need so that'll be a next year topic that we'll be looking at uh, potentially adding to that reserve okay okay well, thank you all right thank you further discussion all in favor it's carried 11.8 Result, resolved that bylaw number 14, 2022, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, providing for exemption of certain lands from taxation for municipal purposes, be read at first time. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor Bobbin. So, when you say tax exemption, is that municipal tax or is school tax? We're talking about here? Municipal. So this is a property that we were at the meeting about a couple weeks ago? Yeah, this is, we've had some applications uh, in the past and we've never really had a process to follow. Now there's an app, this will create that process for anybody that will qualify uh, to be tax exempt. 
I guess my only question is... Uh, oh, no, but uh, the application process. Yeah. So I guess my only question, this is a, a religious institution with people living there. With which? Where there's going to be people living in this dwelling? Uh, yeah, I guess there would be. So, how, so that means there's going to be residents with tax exemption. Yeah, because right now we even have like churches that have that, that fall under that. Oh, they do? Yeah. Okay. Explain to it. Thank you. Councilor Morio? You took the words out of my mouth. The, the rectory at the Catholic Church has a residence. Okay. So right. that's tax exempt. So, and I believe this property is probably existingly tax exempt as it is an existing church. So it's probably um, because of the new owners. <laughs> Okay, Councillor Delorier. So uh, it references that it's it's tax exempt except for local improvements. Uh, does that also include special service pilots? It's not exempt from special. That, my understanding is that is that's the whole point of special service bylaws is that they apply to exempt properties. It doesn't specifically uh, say that in here. It mentions it's local improvements, but could I get? Uh, Clarification before the next reading that that it does also include uh, there's special service bylaws would still be applicable. Yeah, according to the law, special service bylaws would be applicable, but we'll definitely confirm that. Okay, you'll confirm that. Okay. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Eleven point nine. Resulted by law 3, 2022, being a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw 9, 2004, as amended to rezone lots 1, 2, and 3, plan 59267, from RS6 residential single family zone to RT residential two family zone, be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All right, this is a recorded vote, correct? It is a recorded vote, yeah. All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> it's unanimous. 1110, result of the bylaw 7 2022 <coughs> being a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw 9 2004 as amended to rezone lots 21 to 37, block 3, plan. Uh, 2554 from ML Light Industrial to MH he Industrial Heavy be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Deputy Mayor Tony, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion? Again, a recorded vote. All in favor? It's carried. Unanimous. 11 11. Result of bylaw 8, 2022, being a bylaw <coughs> to establish a tax stabilization reserve fund, be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Deputy Mayor Antoni. Discussion? Councillor Bobic, then Councillor Delorier. So this reserve fund would only use funds when there's <coughs> or would council be able to put into that reserve fund at any budget? I think they could add to it at any time. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, they can add to it in, in any budget year. And it's, it's typical in larger municipalities to have these reserves. Uh, they are typically used. It is for those, as the CFO Ganita stated, uh, unforeseen circumstances that, you know, it seems we have no choice but to to raise taxes, uh, that's where that reserve council could choose to use it to stabilize the right. increase. Council Morio. Uh, <coughs> the intent behind this fund, uh, Councilor Bobbick, was that instead of all of our surpluses going into nominal surplus and then having to follow that mathematical game that they have of how much we can take out in each year, we can put this, uh, our excess surpluses into this and then we are unrestricted of when and how and where we use it. Yeah, my, un 
under the impression you can only pull on nominal surplus certain times in the budget? Uh, can't that let it get below a certain amount. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. That explains it. Thank you. Councilor Morio, not a not a not a game, but maybe a, a mathematical process. Okay. <laughs> further further discussion. All in favor? <clears throat> oh, sorry. This is a record of the vote. All in favor? It's carried. Unanimous. Result of pursuance of sections 1523 of the Municipal Act. Council going to committee and close the meeting to discuss or to the meeting. Close the meeting to the public. Uh, discussion is the town hall meeting and also town growth plan. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Balbic. Discussion. All in favor? It's carried. We're in camera. Result this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 9.30 p.m. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. <laughs>